So my friend lent me the game Jack and Daxter. I had never heard of it before. Honestly, I just kind of thought it was going to be like Croc. Not in gameplay. I don't know what the gameplay of Croc looks like. But in that is kind of just like a cult classic with like not a lot of attention on it. I mean, that's what I thought the whole time I played it. But it turns out that it's actually a game that is very popular and impacted the history of gaming. Don't worry guys. I just did that on purpose to show you what not to do. I actually am really good at this game. Find the trans pad. Use a 200 mirror to reach the power cell. I sound like Franklin the turtle in some of these clips because I had a cold. I don't want to hear about it. Oh, zoomer. 200 mer. It can swim. Ah! Welcome back to Zoomer Reviews, everybody. Jack and Daxter review, yes. I'm gonna be telling you about my first experience playing this game and also some history behind it on why the game is like that. I was going to cosplay for this, but then I didn't like the way it looked. So this is the outfit for today. And if you don't like it, then you could leave. Um, Don't click away from the video. So what is Jack and Daxter? Jack and Daxter is a game about a boy, Jack, and his brother, Daxter, who gets turned into a weird hybrid animal cat thing after his brother, Jack, accidentally pushes him into some mysterious ooze. The goal of the game is to reverse Daxter's transformation. What is happening? Oh, they're gonna fall into the goo! What? He's like a squirrel! In order to do so, they need to collect power cells, which essentially unlock other locations. I would have pledged my word that I had 90 of them, but I gather that your young friend, you know, the little annoying, miserably ugly one, what? might have just pilfered them as a sort of a fun fun. Damn! In order to get these cells, you can do quests, solve puzzles, fight bosses, or collect the precursor orbs, those little eggs that are scattered throughout the map, and then trade them for power cells. The horse's curse. Haha! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I got a power cell for punching a bird in the face? It essentially is another collectathon from the early 2000s and late 90s. What makes it any different? Well, I'll tell you what makes it different. I'll tell you what makes it different. There are so many weird and funny characters in this game that really bring it to life. With the addition of voice acting, it really makes the open world feel full and alive. A gambling addict who gambled his way into being stuck in a barrel until someone beats a race record. Well, what are you waiting for? This barrel's getting itchy. Which apparently is very itchy. I try not to think too hard about it. There is this thing called the Oracle, who sounds kind of like a demon from a 70s movie. What's this? Is this a, a talking the vacuum? Wait. When the view has the light within. Was this voice acted by Ashley Roboto? And my personal favorite, the swamp landowner who is drunk off of moonshine. Howdy, friends. Enjoying my beautiful swamp? I don't need these here parts. Judging by the smell, I'd wager your bathtub sank in the mud long ago. Oh, wow, he's just insulting this guy. What's a bathtub? What? Who apparently doesn't bathe, I guess. I mean, just from seeing these clips, you can already see that the humor in this game is unmatched. It is definitely one of its strong points. You and I go cruising on this a grab zoomer. Rule number one, I don't date animals. <laughs> Rule number one, I don't date otters. Yeah, I tried that before. <laughs> it did not go well. She must have dated an otter. That's the only thing I understand from this. Also, he's not even an otter. He's a... Uh, what is he? He is actually half otter, half weasel. So technically, I guess you could say he's an otter. How did she know? See, she she knew, she knew. I didn't know at first glance. She knew at first glance he was an otter. She's dated an otter. So sure, the characters in the game are funny, but what about the quests themselves that they send you on? Are they actually good? Well, No! Okay, at least it doesn't cost me anything to try again. Again, 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 again. No! No! God 
damn it! All right, I'm. I am the fish. I am the, I'm the fish's fisherman. I'm the fish. <laughs> I'm the fish whisperer. I love fish. It's one thing to be traumatized by old Farmer Puckett and his anti-bathing, moonshine-drinking, muffin-eating weirdness, but it's another thing to be traumatized by having to do a fucking fish minigame a hundred times. These minigames are hard. When I said muffin eating, I meant this quest to help him protect his swamp muffins. He has muffins in his swamp he needs you to protect. And you need to protect them from getting eaten by rats by blasting them with your yellow eco, which is essentially like a fireball that deletes their lives. You just gotta blast the rats away from his muffins. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, wow. bah. Why is he, why are there, listen, I know he doesn't have a bathtub. I know he's drunk. He's for sure drunk. He's got a bottle of moonshine, okay? But why, why are his muffins in the swamp? I don't like it, and it's scary, and I and I'm scared. So yeah, you can basically tell this this game is this game is a blast. It's 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 fun just based off of that. Let me tell you though, as far as mini games go, that rat one is really not that bad. This one, some of you guys know already what I'm about to bring up, but this is the one that really kicks you in the balls. Oh, that's what this is. Um. We almost done. Wait, no. Oh, oh, it's fine. We can make it there in time, probably. <gasps> I have to do that all over again. So a mini game where you have to drive through rings and is a little unforgiving is pretty standard for games from this time. But wait, after trying it over and over again, this is how it rewards me for beating it. Yes. Holy shit. And of course. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. That's just evil. Not all the mini games and quests are that frustrating. Many of them are really creative and interesting. Take this one, for example. I'd use my in-game abilities to figure out how to move this pillar. It's simple, sure, and definitely belongs at the beginning of the game, but it was kind of cool to have to figure out the specific jump I needed to move this pillar so I could get on top of it. One of the game's gimmicks, Eco, which is actually the same thing Dax fell into at the beginning of the game, has a greater purpose. Different colors do different things. Yellow lets you throw fireballs, red makes you stronger, blue makes you run fast, and green increases your health. It's just another little thing that adds to this game. And you're never going to believe this. I found a speedrunner's glitch during my first playthrough of the game. It's known as the Citadel skip. It lets you skip the end of the game. And I accidentally triggered it. So right before the last section of the game, I decided to save the game and end stream so that I could easily complete the game in the next stream. But in doing so, I unknowingly performed what is known as the Citadel skip which is a great speedrun trick, but not a great first time player trick. Let's go right here. Now this is another uh, pause buffer. All you do is pause buffer, roll jump through the cutscene that usually plays and die. Come on. But another thing will happen right here, and this is black label exclusive. As you can see at the top of Citadel, Citadel skip. <laughs> Yeah, it's just a, like a flagging error. So the next time I loaded into the game, the Citadel was completed, leaving me only one sage to save and I missed the cutscene. So I had no idea what was going on and had to backtrack through the Citadel to get everything. I'm a little worried because it, it already shows that I freed the green sage and I couldn't hear him. So I have no idea what the f I'm supposed to do, but it's fine. This made it so confusing. And because the game thought I already freed the sages, it froze every time that I collected a power cell because it couldn't play the cutscenes. So I even went to the final boss without completing the last area because I was confused. Even though I had to backtrack through the Citadel to find it, I did eventually get all the power cells, but I did not actually watch the cutscenes. I still haven't watched the cutscenes of the sages, so I still don't really know what they look like. I should have watched the cutscenes, but I didn't, so... I didn't want to get all the uh, precursor orbs, like the eggs, because it seemed like a real pain, but it turns out the power cells is all you need for the special ending, which was actually only mildly rewarding in itself. 
Honestly, I kind of got all the cells because I just had that much fun doing all the little quests and puzzles and stuff, which is pretty rare compared to other collectathons from this time. I mean, do you really need that power cell? It's the only power cell I don't have. Do you know how frustrating this stuff? 99? Absolutely, I need it. You think I would go to all this trouble to just give up on the last scout fly yeah it's not it's not definitely not that important i mean donkey kong 64 came out just two years before this if anyone here ever tried to 100 percent donkey kong 64 then you know that it is horribly painful i have nightmares about beaver bother every day beaver bother gave me ibs so clearly this game aged well and was quite fun, but how exactly did a game this simple leave a mark on gaming history? Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy, was released on December 3rd, 2001 as one of the earliest games for the PS2 and is considered one of the console's defining franchises. The series itself holds seven records in the 2008 edition of the Guinness World Records Gamer Edition, with Precursor Legacy holding a record for including the first seamless 3D world in a console game. To put that into perspective, Grand Theft Auto 3 was released two months before Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy, and has loading screens. Even though these graphics may not look like much by today's standards, back then, this was cutting edge. According to Wikipedia, 40 minutes of in-game animation required four full-time animators and two support animators. In some cases, the animators even came from places like Disney and Nickelodeon. This game was a double whammy and had the sales to back it up too. Jack and Daxter was the 17th best-selling PlayStation 2 game, beating out Metal Gear Solid 3, Ratchet and & Clank, and Guitar Hero 2. I mean, 17th may not seem like a crazy number, but the games that it beat out, they're pretty well-loved games. Clearly, this game is good, and it held up, and that in itself really speaks to the quality. This game has the perfect blend of challenge, humor, and explorability. The only thing that I found in this game that didn't age well was the lack of subtitles, but even that was fixed in later versions of the game. So overall, I rate this game 5 swap muffins out of 5. This game is Zoomer approved! Subscribe.